he was a young I'm not Afrikaner smudging you. I'm quoting you. nationalist. I'm quoting you. I'm not smudging you. The bottom no, come line. Come on, come on. You, even you, Max. even you, Max. Even you should not. Anybody say that. who reads your you book know. will see that. Anybody who reads. I your, invite you people. For I a wrote while, the book. I know you did. For a while, you even tried to be a good nationalist, a good Afrikaner nationalist. No, I tried now, to be a Max, good Afrikaner. Now, Max, the bottom line is this: you described who you were, and I referred to that. I also respect the and fact. And then I had a short period of, of being a non-racialist. Stop interrupting me. Well, that's your big don't. mistake. That's why you behave like you behave on Twitter, and people just say Helen is a racist. And every time they do that, I come up and say, I differ very greatly from Helen Ziller, but I have not ever seen. And I did that again two weeks ago. I have never seen one iota of evidence that she, she is a racist. Thank you, Max. And I <laughs> oh. Give them hell. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you hell. Helen. <laughs> oh my, oh my. This journalist, boy, oh boy, this journalist, uh, something, hey? Eh? I'm talking about Max Dupree's. I'm not talking about Jermaine Dupree's, for those who are into hip hop. I'm talking about Max Dupree's. He's a publisher of an African newspaper. Publisher. Freevierkblad.com. I hope that I'm saying it right. He wrote an article, okay, about Helen Zill on the 2nd of July. That's a few days ago. The title is a lunatic title, obviously, by a seasoned uh, veteran journalist. It's called From Leader. To Twitter lunacy. What happened to Zeal? So. It's written in July. And then. On top of that. If you go back. Less than seven months. From now. Helen Zeal. Invited the same Max Dubreeze. For a. Famous. Tea with Helen show. It's on YouTube. Everybody can just go to YouTube and watch the whole interview. In this latest article of the 2nd of July 2020 by Max Dubreez, Helen Ziller addresses each and every point that Max Dubreez has said. So the advantage with this, he calls himself a mainstream media. Congratulations. So the advantage with this lamestream media journalist is that you can speak to them, they ask you all the questions, you give them all the answers, and later on they go and, and pen an article behind closed door. You know? Let me quickly read it for you. It's a short article. It goes, From leader to Twitter lunacy, what happened to Zeal? After her latest mindless Trump-esque Twitter bomb, even some of Helen Zell's staunchest supporters have stopped defending her and asked the question many of her old friends and allies have asked for a while. What on earth has gone wrong with Zell? By the way, um, Max Dupree is also sick. He's suffer is suffering from uh, the TDS that most of the liberal professors and uh, mainstream media journalists are suffering from the TDS, the Trump uh, derangement syndrome. That's why he just starts by saying, after her latest mindless Trump-esque Twitter bomb. So, Helen Zell is mindless and her Twitter is Trump-esque, which is mindless. Anyway, 
How did she move from being a progressive anti-apartheid activist, a dynamic politician who has done more than anyone else to make the DS a real factor in SA politics, the best mayor in the country and an outstanding premier to a re reactionary and guided missile that is systematically destroying her party. It was buzzing on Facebook, Twitter and many WhatsApp groups. Is Zilla perhaps unstable? <laughs> did someone, did something terrible happen to her that has affected her judgment? Once again, for those who care to remember, when Trump uh, just started a year or two years into presidency, um, he was hammered in terms of attacks about him being um, mentally unstable and so forth. Uh, throughout all this uh, mainstream media, uh, outlets to such an extent that then he has to show his uh, doctor's note, his physical uh, examinations that he took. And um, with that, the, the, the doctor, the physician who was administering uh, Trump's uh, health fitness also was being attacked, uh, where then they said that he was a quack to such an extent that on the next year when Trump was uh, making his uh, physical fitness test, the Surgeon General, someone who who's sort of a, doc, a top, top doctor uh, in the administration, had to then come out and speak about how healthy Trump is and so forth. And that uh, Surgeon General was also being attacked. And uh, this gentleman was also there in the previous... Uh, I think three administration where he was administering uh, health and uh, tests for other previous presidents, but during that time, nobody said anything about that. Now, folks, this is a Trump derangement syndrome. If you want to scour through Matt Dupree's uh, Twitter feed, you'll just see, you know, uh, yeah, Trump is also living fr uh, 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 free in his in his head ran free by the way so you see now he also talks about the whatsapp groups that that are talking about uh, Helen Zilla being unstable anyway so I don't know if that whatsapp group uh, I guess maybe he's a member of those whatsapp groups uh, <clears throat> and he knows more his article continues or oh, was she actually always an old-style white liberal with a race chip on the shoulder who paraded as progressive but was mostly concerned with white interest her tweets last week stunned me lol there are more racist laws today than they were under apartheid all racist laws are wrong but permanent victimhood is too highly priced to recognize this this is the tweet of uh, Helen Zell Right? So now, Max DeBreeze obviously is insinuating, he's a coward by the way, because he was uh, squirming like a primary school boy when he was faced with Helen Zill face to face to talk about all these issues. He got all the answers that he wanted, that he, 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 he wanted from the questions and um, I'm going to try to get the clips, some of the most important clips that they were talking about regarding this issue. So he's re-litigating uh, this issue, the fodder here again, because he's hiding behind the pen now, okay? He's just scared to say it. Um, Helen Zele is racist, because that's what he wants to say, but he's scared to say it, you know? And in front of Helen Zele, Helen Zille, Max Dupree said that Helen Zille is uh, a sweetie pie. He's always out there defending her and saying that uh, Helen Zille is not a racist. Uh, but behind this desk, he's attacking Helen Zille. Maybe it's a competition. 
poor Max Dupree feels that his accolades against uh, fighting against apartheid as an apartheid anti-activist are not way much than, you know, a tinge of jealousy here, you know. Anyways, um, let me just continue with the article. So, uh, oh yeah, there's where now he says. It was the kind of thing Steve Hofmeyer or Ernst Roots of AfriForum might say. Not someone who was politically, political reporter during apartheid, who aligned herself with the black sash, who harbored black activists from the security police, who witnessed the demise of apartheid and the rise of democracy from up close. <clears throat> so, he knows that Helen Zeller's was harboring black activists, you know, giving them place to hide from the security police, the apartheid police. She aligned herself with the Black Sesh organization, you know, anti anti apartheid organizations. <coughs> See? But on the other side, uh, Max Dubris is linking Helen Zill with Steve Hofmeyer and Ernst Roots of AfriForum. <clears throat> I beg your pardon. And later on, on, on the very same um, tea with Helen program, Max Dupriest also wanted to equate Afri Forum as sort of a racist group that doesn't want to be with anybody, where he was obviously quickly uh, corrected by Helen Zill that Afri Forum is a cultural and African. Africaners or Africans organizations that looks for the interest of that cultural group. In fact, any culture out there, you know, be it Zulu, be it Sepedi, uh, Tsonga, and so forth, everyone has a right to start their own cultural groups that has their interest of their own cultural group, okay? By the way, we have to demystify this thing of saying that when you're looking out for your own cultural group in order to advance it, in order to improve it, be it with literature, uh, preserving it and so forth, then you are uh, a tribal, you know, you're tribalistic. See, that has to be done away with. You know, on the other hand, you could say that all the blue, black groups uh, could come together Let's live in harmony and so forth. But you should not vilify any other cultural group for trying to practice its own culture, you know. But this is huge because of the the African agendas by your pan uh, Africanist group, your communists, your socialist groups, and your globalist groups that wants to have the so called United States of, of Africa. So obviously it does away with individual tribal recognition of each and every group for them to you know to, to live and thrive okay so the article continues Zilla was equating black empowerment and affirmative action to laws that took black people's citizenship away and replaced it with citizenship in Bantu stands that forced them to carry past books in wide SA that forcibly removed millions from the land and suburbs declared white that denied the majority economic opportunities through job reservation and a ban on property ownership that kept white and black apart in the cities and towns in the in schools and universities even parks and lifts what could have driven a seasoned intelligent political leader to utter such lunacy against Max Dupree's is knitting words together to get to his point of painting Helen as racist okay everybody got their own opinion about as to who's racist and who's not you know if you feel like Helen Zill is racist that's your opinion if somebody else feel that Helen Zill is not racist that's their own opinion but then you have to put your words and facts together in order to demonstrate it here so in here Mark Dupree's um, talks about black empowerment and affirmative action, right? 
as the same as you know Bantu stands and uh, passbook laws he just needs them together let's separate them Helen Zille also answered Max Dupree's when they're having a one-on-one -on -one about her belief in affirmative action she she actually said that the affirmative action it's supposed to be something that would redress the black community financially as a whole and not something that's going to be designed and has to be having some sweet sweetness and um, laws that would then be put together at the end of the day that is going to benefit the black elites where else other deserving people who would come up with their own businesses would not be able to get through and get funding and get be uh, opportunities because of they don't have a political connection at the top all right Back to the article. It could have been just a moment of madness. She had done this before, most noticeably when she tweeted that the legacies of colonialism were not only negative, and when she supported F.W.D. Clark's position that apartheid wasn't a crime against hum humanity. In the storm after a tweet, even the Freedom Front Plus said her statement wasn't true. So here we go again. Remember, Max Dupree has already painted th that um, a picture that the Freedom Front Plus are, I guess, racist on steroids. So now he's even saying that the Freedom Front Plus, of which Max Dupree is insinuating that they are racist on steroids, are even denying your mild racist talent. With the statement <laughs> that she has said all right let's continue zilla seemed unrepentant and sniped at her critics in her own party and she is the da's federal council chair she had an angry exchange on twitter with senior da mp pumzile van dam who accused her faction of terrorizing their opponents in the DA. Several other black DA leaders criticized Zile, among them Houten leader John Moody, MP Sanganani Gumbi, and former DA youth leader who is contesting the upcoming leadership election, Mbalin Duli. From inside the DA's wide ranks, hardly a peep was heard. And so the caricature of a white-led party with a bunch of unhappy but powerless black representatives was reinforced. So the patronizing continued. He says the caricature of white-led party with a bunch of unhappy but powerless black representative was reinforced. I don't know who reinforced this caricature. Uh, so in other words, he's saying that the black um political members in the DA are powerless but wait until we get to this other part here where now he's talking about the other black leaders who were forced out or who resigned from the DA SA, SA will if the pandemic allows it hold local elections next year the last time the DA got 26 percent of the vote and the party had hoped it could make up for the losses in the last year's general election, especially because of the failure of so many ANC local councils. Zealous returned to the DA top leadership. Her perceived boziness and her reckless behavior on social media have probably dashed that hope. The exit of two top black DA leaders Musi Maimani and Herman Mashaba was directly linked to her. Oh, there is a theory. <laughs> this is not even where, when the the so-called 
uh, mainstream media would say that uh, sources uh, with uh, uh, the familiar s stories or sources within the political party said ABC. No, he just says there is a theory that Zile is moving to the right to make the DA more attractive to Africana voters who abandoned the party for the FF+. Plus. But it is difficult to understand why she would exchange a handful of white voters for the the only real potential the only real growth potential for for the DA black and brown voters I met Zil in Soweto in June 1976 when we were young reporters we were never close but I always knew what she was doing and had many encounters with her I cannot explain her strange behavior over the past few years other than it is prob other than that it is probably has something to do with her personality okay so he says he he doesn't understand the strange behavior over the past few years and i'm telling you now that the tea with helen uh one on one with max du du dupree and helen zilla just happened less than eight months ago okay and he also asked about the freedom front uh plus moving away from the da and also got answered but here he continues hiding behind the desk with his pen to write everything that if you go and watch that interview there are answers to everything that he has said so it continues so this is where he's building up um his um narrative or his point or his nice and uh, egg walking eggshell walking way of trying to insinuate that helen zell is racist after all okay here it goes he says she's i cannot explain her strange behavior over the past few years other than that it is that it probably has something to do with her personality she's always combative intolerant and doesn't tolerate criticism or opposing views but is she a racist as so many on social media allege by the way she uh, helen zilla when uh, speaking to max debris said that hey listen everybody on uh, social media would simply call you a racist uh it's easy you know and she's got no time for that and what she likes is because of when you are in a social media when you are tweeting something else you know there are no the context sometimes could there are no emotives you could write something in capital letter that would uh, maybe signify that I guess you're angry or you're shouting and so forth and the most important cure for all this misunderstanding is when you speak to someone face to face so Helen Zilla said that but here we go I have never seen any evidence of this being the case in the ordinary sense of the word racist but events of the past few years made me suspect that the deep that deep down she believes that her party and perhaps more than just her party should be led by white people if true okay so he says events of the past few years of which i said they just met about less than eight months ago they spoke so i don't know what events is Max Dupree's talking about because all the issues that Max Dupree's came out with to Helen they were answered so now he's playing a, 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 a psychologist slash psychiatrist that maybe deep down you know you see though he say I have never seen any evidence of this being the case in the ordinary sense of the word racist or whatever that means 
But events of the past few years made me suspect that deep down she believes that her party and perhaps more than just her party should be led by white people. If true, is that not racist? No evidence whatsoever. Allegations, insinuations. And then he says, if true, is that not racist? So the article continues. She handpicked young black leaders like Maimani and Lindiwe Mazibuko and pushed them into leadership roles. But when she discovered they had their own views and approaches, she undermined them. She is doing it again now with people like Fandam and Nduliu, two strong politicians who could have boosted the DA standing among black voters. <coughs> See the thing of patronizing black voters, black votes. Max DuBreeze is doing it again. See? So, on the same token, Max DuBreeze says that Helen Zille and picked my... Uh, Musima Imani and Lindiwe Masibu go into leadership roles, right? When she discovered that they had their own views and approaches, she undermined them. So Helen Zille and picked my money and Mazibuk in order to get the black vote, okay? According to, to, to Max Dupree's, okay? Let's just say that's the way it is. And then maybe when they find their own voices, she booted them out. And now this time, Obviously, she booted them out in order for the DA not to have more or, or votes from the black communities. And now he's alleging that she's doing it again with Van Damme and Dooley, two strong politicians who could have boosted the DA standing among black voters. See what I mean? Which is doesn't make sense. And he ended up by saying, history will not remember Helen Zill as an anti-apartheid campaigner or a great administrator but as the individual who made sure the DA would forever be tainted as a party caring only about white interest so he is definitely saying that history will not remember Helen Zell as an anti-apartheid uh, campaigner and I don't know what this is based on because this is not based on facts. This is not based on stats. And he says history will judge. And uh, maybe I don't know um, whether in 10 years time or 20 years time. But I'm sure we'll find out. So what I'm making out now is that I can see that Max Dupree He's one of those white liberal um, journalists, you know, who who are uh, a poison into uh, black communities. You know, <coughs> he. I mean, he's one of those people who then feed feed his. To paraphrase uh, Winston Churchill, you know, you get your friends, you feed them to the crocodiles, and you just keep feeding them in a, in a hope that the crocodile will the crocodile will eat you last. As always, thanks for your time and thanks for watching the Mamuji show, and I'm out.